Another banger, Sheldon. Another great episode of the challenge. Uh, we've, I, my understanding is that you watched this last night. I watched it this morning. Um, but already we're getting people in the in the Twitter feed saying that this might be an all time season. Let's do some introductions. Yeah. I'm John Chidley Hill. And as always, I am Sheldon Alexander. And this is You Killed It, the podcast about the challenge, talking about War of the Worlds. Sheldon, what did you think, just off the top, just broadly, of this episode, of this season? Uh, to me, it's pretty simple, right? Like, they went back to basics. They went back to the typical episodes that make for a good time. You have a little bit of house drama. You have an actual challenge. You have more house drama with the nominations. Then you have an elimination. That's it. Add in a twist here and there. And you got a classic episode of the challenge. Everybody goes home happy. I have to say, I agree with you, especially on the note of the twists. Like, I think they got addicted to twists in the last few seasons. And, like, sure, they have small twists this Mm -hmm. season where they'll be like, oh, this is a double elimination, but it's nothing major. Like, it's not like, oh, you thought that you're going to be playing, like, this kind of game? Well, actually, you're playing, you know what I mean? Like, I think they went too far in the past. But now, it's nice. It's measured. Uh, Yeah, no, it was definitely a good time, and it's definitely like one of those things where there's still so many people, but there's so many uh, different personalities that the drama is just enough. You know, like, if it was just the Kara and Polly and, you know, Kyle stuff and that alone, which I know there's a lot of that, but to me there's still enough other people and other other interesting characters that I'm in. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's start with just like the top of this episode. It opens up just like last week, opening up with, I mean, basically no time has elapsed. It's It's been the van ride from the previous elimination. So we've got Zach and Zahida pumped because they just eliminated Bananas. Zach, yep. you know, thanking Zahida for knowing where she was born and what country she lives in. Uh, and then almost immediately we've got Jenna telling Zach that Kyle was cheering against him and that she'd heard that from Cara Maria, who last episode said, like, had noted that, uh, Kyle was cheering for Bananas rather than Zach. And, well, I'm not the biggest... Kara's whole M.O., Kara's whole, whole M.O. this season so far, her and Polly has just been to create drama, to be the center of attention, to create storylines, to just be in the middle of everything. So it's not surprising at all that she would try to start this, you know, this whole little thing by telling Jenna that, hey, this is going on. But I'm going to give credit to Zach here, because Zach... Zach handled this in the correct way first off, like just saying, well, where did this come from? Oh, it came from Kara. Then having the ability to go to Kyle and say, listen, man, I don't even think it's that big of a deal because if you were in there for Leroy, I'd be cheering for two people as well. Like, I I understand. Like, it's not a big deal. Yeah. To have that understanding instead of just being like, why would you cheer for him instead of me? We're better friends. Like, I got to give Zach credit. Zach is having a much better season Minus the hiccup of, you know, the little uh, argument he and Jenna had over the Tinder stuff, which I still don't even really know what was going on there. But Zach's been a really good partner so far to Zahida, which we'll see a little more later on as we discuss this episode. But also just the way he's handling his, his, his ish around the house with Kyle, right? Like him and Jenna seem to be in a good place too. So maybe they ironed all that out. We just don't know about it yet. But Zach having a better season so far. I know there's going to be a lot of people coming at me being like, how can you defend Zach? Zach's a jerk. But I'm just saying in the context of this season, shouts to Zach so far. I'll tell you what, Sheldon, you and I can share that heat because I also thought that Zach handled things the exact appropriate way and that he's having a good season thus far. And I know Zach's not the most popular 
challenger with viewers. But so far, so good. Definitely should not have gone on Bumble. Uh, and last season, definitely, you know, should not have been such a dick to Jenna, who is a wonderful human being. And I think everyone loves Jenna. But, you know, he's handling his business and he's handling it well. He's in, like, a lot of people in this house. He's caught in the crossfire between Cara Maria, Polly, and Kyle. And we're going to talk about that whole fucking situation. I think this is the episode where we really have to tackle all that nonsense. But I agree with you. I think Zach handled it well. Just went directly to his guy, said, hey, I heard this. I'm not super pissed because you know what? I considered it and like where I'd be in your shoes and I would have probably done something similar. Well, to me, the dumbest part about this whole Cara Maria, Kyle situation is that there's already massive numbers on the other side of the house if you include the Brits. And I know that Kyle technically is on that side. Like, not really, though, but he could be to that side. But he really isn't. And so if they were actually smart, they should be worrying about getting their numbers together with the just regular challenge people or people who have been on the challenge before instead of splitting their votes by arguing over Car Maria. Right? Like... That's the part to me that is the funniest, watching this from the outside looking in. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, But if you look at this actual challenge, though, right? I thought when you get to the actual challenge, because, again, talking about how well Zach did as a partner, I mean, this was a, a challenge where you really got to see how good, like, your teamwork was really important. That was really the key to this challenge, how well you worked as a team, but how well you also identified the strengths and weaknesses of your team. Because part of it was, okay, well, who's the most afraid of heights? Who's going to, you know what I mean? Like you have to figure all that out. But let's break it down first. It was called ball out and you're 100 feet off the ground. One person's on a huge, massive beam, which you have to swing back and forth. The other person is standing on the stage. You have to run across grab onto the beam while the beam is swinging back and forth you have to then jump off of said beam and hit a bell like leap off of the beam and hit a bell top three fastest times end up as a part of said tribunal this challenge i thought looking at it it was incredible like it looked hard yeah it looked challenging and no matter if you were afraid of heights or not i feel like both parts were difficult if you're afraid of heights but i didn't realize at the beginning that you could choose who went where because okay Polly, we start off with Polly and ninja natalie right which i don't even really think it's fair that a ninja gets to compete in this competition no it was built like for perfectly her perfectly made for her. it was <laughs> built for her like as soon as soon as they explained i'm like well I, like obviously Ninja Natalie is going to do amazing at this. Yeah, it was so good. And I mean, I know we we bypassed the whole Polly looking like a jerk as he pretended to hump the the thing, but there's a lot of met moments in this episode where Polly looks like a jerk, so we'll get to we'll get to that later. But in terms <laughs> of this challenge, yeah, Ninja Natalie just completely dominates it. She gets across like super easily, hits the bell, cool. The next team up, Bear and Davon. I was wondering why Bear wasn't the one that was doing the jumping. He seemed more like the monkey. He he seems more like the monkey in terms of like, you know, wanting to hop around and leap from, you know, building to building, for lack of a better term, right? Yeah. But at the same time, Davon mentioned that she's a, like terrified of heights. Yeah. So having to jump off a platform onto a moving object and then while on said moving object, jump off of that to hit something else. That seems like a lot for someone who might be afraid of heights. Yeah. And instead you have Bear do it. And he was kind of chirping Davon for struggling, even though she gave a pretty good effort. Yeah. So I have a lot of thoughts on this. First of all, shout out to Davon. Because for someone who is a self-admit, ter- like self-admits that she's terrified of heights... I thought she did great. Like, she almost did it. She almost got it. I think yeah. the other problem was that Polly and Natalie, Ninja Natalie, went first. 
And so every single person was like, oh, well, like, we'll just follow the same format. The only problem is that format doesn't work unless you have Ninja Natalie, right? Yeah. And totally. also, notably, Polly and Ninja Natalie are not that dissimilar in size. Like, Polly is not a big dude at all. And yeah. in my mind, the swinger, like the person who's shifting the pendulum back and forth, has the easier job, right? Because, like, who doesn't know how to shift their weight around? And I totally think true. I think that because they had that example of Polly and Ninja Nally admittedly doing a great job at it, and they were so focused on how heavy it would be to swing the pendulum that they, like didn't really engage in the thought process and consider the person who's jumping has the harder job. This is not a disrespect to any of the female competitors or their athleticism, but what you really need is long arms and or really good grip strength. And like athleticism too, for sure. Yeah. And like I'm sure when they came down, some of the guys were like, Hey Paulie, what was it like to like move that pendulum back and forth? And he'd say it's hard. But also, he's 160 pounds, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's hard for him because he's not the biggest dude. But a bigger guy, like a Leroy, isn't going to have that hard a time. And conversely, Davon, who's like pretty tall and athletic, I don't, I mean, she might have a little bit of a harder time getting the pendulum going. But I think so many uh, of these teams had the woman do the jumping. When that's just not playing to their strengths. Like, I think they sort of are like, oh, well, it worked for Polly and Ninja Nally, so it'll work for us. Only when... It's also, too, it's also too about weight distribution, though, right? Yeah. So, like, Davon and Bear, like, Bear isn't, like, a massive human being. So the chances of Davon being able to swing the, the pendulum with Bear on it isn't that... Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not going to be that big of a deal. No. Whereas would Shailene being able to swing it while Leroy's up there, that might be a little more difficult. Like I could maybe understand it in that instance, right? Because the other part of it is how much would you have to swing your partner, which comes it down to how much is your partner afraid of heights? Because if your partner isn't afraid of heights, then maybe as soon as they jump on, it's going to swing back maybe once, maybe twice, and then yeah. they're jumping across. But if you're in a situation where your partner is afraid of heights and now you're there swinging and you're swinging this person that's way heavier than you, that might be a little more difficult, but to further to your point, more doable, right? Still yeah. doable. Um, but still, I was generally impressed with how people did. I know a lot of people didn't make it. Um, yeah, like if we just whip through, like Shailene and Leroy, felt, Shailene fell off right away. Amanda jumped and missed right away, which led to your man's Turbo, who had a low-key big boy episode. Yeah. <laughs> Turbo Turbo says he's tapping his chest in his confessional, and he's like, uh, what is this, boobs or what? It looks like she broke her boobs. <laughs> I'm like, what is it? Who is it? Who is this guy? <laughs> like, I just want to – I don't have a grasp of, like, who Turbo is yet because he looks – and sounds again. I think last time I said Ray Donovan. This time I, I wrote down he looks like the bad guy in Twenty Four. But yep. who is this guy? He, I just can't get a grasp on his personality because he just says like the most random things ever. And that was all on full display in this episode. I feel like his beard gets thicker and darker every episode, and not uh, bigger. I just feel like it's slowly like. It's absorbing light. Like, you're just not... Like, he's got, like, a black hole forming on his face. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, Natalie, Cam, they both fall as well. And then we mentioned Zach, right? Zach being a really good partner. And we saw that again here. So, he says he's afraid of heights, but he knows that Zahida, this is her first height challenge being on the show so he's like there's no way i'm gonna let her go out and have to do this because it's a difficult this is a difficult height challenge in comparison to a lot of the other ones that we see right and for him to acknowledge that and say i'm gonna be the one that jumps especially adding in what you were just talking about john in terms of most of the other teams having the dudes be the person swinging and the females jumping great call by zach 
Zahida does a good job in swinging it back and forth. Zach goes out, jumps across, hits it easily, and Zahida's fired up. That's the other part. She's now so much more confident, you know, just in terms of getting along with Zach. She knows that Zach has her interests in mind as well. And what a far cry from Zach last year with Amanda. What does this say about Zach and Amanda's failed partnership last season? Well, you think Zach just learned about it, or is it just Amanda is that much more difficult to deal with than Zahida? I think it's a combination of things. Uh, it's a cop out answer. No, it's no, no. Out. I'm joking. I'm no, joking. hear me out. Hear me out. Because I also noted that CT is so much nicer to Julia than he was to Veronica. Veronica, yes, true. And I Very think true. I think that it's partly that they go back and they watch the tape. Like, if you're CT, and, like, he sort of owned it last season when, like, he started to, like, apologize and regret how he spoke to Veronica. But I'm sure that Zach, I mean, you and I got blowback about the Zach and Amanda fight last season. I can't imagine what either of them had to put up with in their comments and mentions. And, and you know, obviously they have to go back and watch the tape. I'm sure Zach had a wake-up call where he's like, shit, man, like, like even if he disagrees with peop- with what people were saying, I'm sure some of it landed. You know what I mean? Like, you can't ignore that kind of feedback. And also, yeah. I think that in both the case of CT and Veronica and Zach and Amanda, it's that there's the history, too. Right, like one thousand percent. With both Julia and with Sahida, they've only known these women for like five days in real time, maybe a week. Like they haven't developed any reason to dislike them. I also think Julia and Zahida are like seems like super nice, reasonable people, and Veronica and Amanda have stronger personalities than they do. So like it's a combination of factors, but I definitely think that you know. They looked back on the tape and were like, Ugh, "Not the best look, not not yeah, not you're right my about best the history self." Of it, yeah, the history does play a role in it for sure because CT's already going in with, "Oh no, I'm with Veronica. She sucks. She doesn't try. She just wants to drink all the time." And then you have Amanda, where Amanda's the pop off queen, right? She's yep. just like going to cause trouble, cause drama for you as her partner. So you're totally right about that. Um, and they're giving their new partners a chance, which, I mean, only makes sense. Like, you have no other choice, really. Like, it'd be a terrible game plan to be super hard on your partner in their first challenge. But in terms of just being a, a total flip of the switch, for lack of a better term, it's a great job by both of them in terms of how they deal with their partner. Um, Theo Theo was shook, but he was super tall, so he was it was able... For him to pull this off pretty easily once he got out of his own head, right? Uh, then we saw Wes missed it. But uh, just Julia barely. was super... Yeah, Wes barely missed it. He was really close. Uh, then we saw Julia. Julia was really close as well. Probably should have swung one extra time, but as you mentioned, CT was all right with her effort that she gave. She's pretty close. Not, bad job, not a bad job there at all. Then there was Jenna and Gus. And... Your man's Gus. He was hyped up. He was fired up. Maybe a little too much. As he leaped across and just banged his face, did a face plant essentially <laughs> into this thing and busted his tooth through his lip. Yeah, he pulled John, a Mick what'd Foley. What did you make of, of Gus's attempt? Uh, I think he's an idiot. Like Wow. Well, you have to be pretty like he led with his face. <laughs> right like that's pretty pretty basic like human instinct is to protect your face to protect your head mm-hmm. and yet I he think, though he was i think he's afraid right so as you're jumping you're like blindly jumping and just trying to grab on to the pole as hard as you can right like do you know what i mean like when you see people who weren't as afraid they were jumping with some form of control in terms of where they oh yeah would I get- put their hands where they put their feet whereas he almost just blindly jumped trying to bear hug it yeah and that led to the face plant but yes you're right go on though. I, I, it's also worth noting 
Maybe our man's Gus. Maybe he's not the most athletic. Like maybe possible. maybe he's all show, no go. You know what I'm saying? Like, because like if you think it really is an athletic thing, like props to everyone who even got so far as to like grab a hold of it and like swing for a minute. Because you have to have good timing. You have to either get your arms wrapped around it or like have your hands grip the ropes. Like it's it's tough to even get out there. Maybe he's not the most coordinated fella. Totally true. And the, the counter to that was Turbo, who was next. I don't Super think Super athletic. I don't made think it look easy. I don't think Turbo even needed the pendulum. <laughs> right like he did a great job i think if it had just been hanging like he didn't have nani swinging it i still think he could have jumped out to it and then like if not gotten it swinging himself then like jumped just from the like pendulum hanging straight down and hit the bell i agree i agree his his performance was crazy he made it look super simple and then started doing like a karate routine or that's, something once he got back down to the floor. That's what I, I didn't was, really understand. I, that's what I was telling you on like the first or second episode, the like spinning front kick. That's that's the clip that they used. Yes, and as uh, CT called him the Turkish Chuck Norris. Yeah. <laughs> Which okay, cool. Um, then there was Hunter in Georgia. If you know, if Turbo made it look super easy. Georgia did as well, but she also like looked like she had to up the level of difficulty to challenge herself because <laughs> she jumped across, no fear at all, but she had to have the strength to pull herself back up, right? Yeah. Gather and then leap across. And her and Hunter, in terms of celebrations, they're definitely the all Selly team on this season of the challenge, right? She's fired up as she's swinging across, screaming. This, that's how we do it in Essex. Okay. Which, all right, cool. We, we got to right? talk about this. I know that what okay. she was doing was a callback to Bears, or was it Ashley's? Ashley, Gorilla Ashley's. That's how we do in London? Yes. But, like, what the fuck is with British shit talk? Like, that's how we do in blank has to stop. Like, that's how we do in Birmingham. That's how we do in Oxford. Like, guys. No, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going the other way with this. You like this? Stunt, shine, hey, do what you do. Rep where you're from. Rep your set. Rep your squad. I'm not <laughs> mad at them. They're happy. They're fired up. They're dominating this season of the challenge so far. Hey, when you win, I say this all the time, when you win, Selly however you'd like. I'm do, a, you get to do whatever you want when you win. I'm not mad at the Sellies. I just think that they could have better quality Sellies that make more sense. Hey, I don't know. Maybe that is how they do in Essex. I don't know. I, <laughs> Who am I to call the bell? I <laughs> strongly doubt that that's how they do it in Essex. <laughs> if, if we have no. a listener that is from Essex, has visited Essex, hell, even if we have a listener that could tell us which side of England Essex is from. (laughs) Weigh in. Is that how they do in Essex? Um, All right. And then, speaking of British smack talk, we've got the main event. We've got Kyle going up there. Well, yep, yep. Conquering his fears because he is, he's known as one of the people who has the worst history like uh, that he hates heights quick question before we even get into what happens to kyle why not have maddie do it uh i feel like kyle is in a situation where he feels so much more responsibility for the situation that they're in that he wants to prove himself and make it up to maddie so he wants to to do a lot of things and take the lead on a lot of things because he feels bad for the situation that he put her in rightly or wrongly i feel like that's what he's doing and that's why he's like no nope, i got this i'll do it yeah that's what i think you could be yeah you could be right like it makes sense to me and like maybe they're assuming that height makes a difference because he's definitely taller than her but like she's not a short person and as we'll see later she's very athletic 
So, I don't know. Like, to me, it makes a lot of sense to have her do it. And, like, if he was worried about, like, having his balls busted for, like, oh, you have your female partner do it. Let's not forget, Polly swung the pendulum and Ninja Natalie did the jumping. So. For sure. And at the same time, too, I mean, Kyle did do a good job. Like, he just barely missed it. Yeah, he was nearly there. But we also have to talk about car maria's there's also kyle's confessional this is a very underrated part that i only really caught on my second viewing (laughs) where kyle says like he missed it he was so close but in his confessional he says i'm not one to make excuses but a gust of wind came out of nowhere (laughs) really man (laughs) come on (laughs) and i rewound it because i was like hold on is he saying this with a straight face as if this is for real yeah no he said it for real he, he was (laughs) <laughs> I mean oh man the, the do you care about the Kara drama is Kara's like inner confessional talking trash saying how she upgraded and you know like also what's your take on Kyle crying right him and Maddie standing there and he's just saying that he's sorry but his reaction she's like it's okay it's okay and he's like crying because he missed it what were your thoughts there, John? Uh, well, you asked me two very different questions. Thoughts. I mean, you know what? Let's fucking get into this Kyle, Kara, Polly situation now because it's going to take up the majority of the rest of the episode. Like, let's just fucking tackle it. Um, it's I agree with Zach and Kyle that Kara Maria is still in love with Kyle. Or, yeah, still in love with Kyle. She said in confessional during the competition... There are no feelings for Kyle. And then she explains, you know, how Polly is an upgrade. Fuck you, Kyle. And, like, not to get into semantics, but if you're... If you dislike someone so much that you say, fuck you, Kyle, they're... That's the definition of having feelings. Like, you could argue that she hates him. But, like, the fact that Polly and Kara are so obsessed with what Kyle is doing... Like, they are so zeroed in on him. And then later on, again, like, when there's the big blow-up at the costume party, when Kara overhears Zack and Kyle talking shit about her, and she's really hurt by this, she runs to Polly and tells him, and then, like, declares to CT and Natalie that she loves Polly, and (laughs) I like that CT's like, good for you. (laughs) Like... I'm just going to say a nice platitude and get the fuck out of this. But Polly then later, like, when Kyle's approaching Georgia to try to put political pressure on her, and Polly, like, comes out of the gates to, like, pick a fight with Kyle, Polly says in confessional, Kara likes it when I get into other guys' faces and when I get all, like, aggressive. She thinks it's hot. Like, this is all about their weird... It's all about... Polly and Kara's weird dynamic. And you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Kara doesn't have any more romantic feelings for Kyle. But the Kara Polly dynamic is so toxic that they see themselves as these like heroic victim nerds who've been bullied their whole lives and now they're coming after everyone who like looked at them sideways before. Because now that they're united and strong and they're together, and it's it's all just like such a sick dynamic. And like Kyle really hasn't done anything to them lately, right? And yet there's yeah, it, they're mean, still after him. And I I don't think it's so much about Kyle now. I think it's about what Kyle represents. And like Polly said, like Kara gets off on when I do this. It's just like. I don't know if you heard this, because this was off season. But when they broke up earlier this uh, year, Polly announced in an Instagram story that Kara used to wear his ex girlfriend Danielle's lingerie, and he would fuck her while wearing Di- Danielle's lingerie. Like they, part of their dynamic is this like weird, like flexing on their ex thing. Right and like that's what's going on, and Kyle and by extension Maddie keep getting pulled into this because like Polly has to show out 
to impress Kara, and he has to show it against Kyle constantly to keep Kara happy. Yeah, I also think that it's just all, like, a lot of it is for show, right? Like, mind you, I think Kara and Kyle, for the most part, are two people who found each other attractive, that were on a reality show, that were there to just have fun, and they continued to have fun, and then add in Polly, it's just Kara having even more fun. Are there real feel- feelings there? Maybe, but... At the same time, they're doing a great job in creating and continuing storylines on a show. Yeah. Um, does Kara still have feelings for Kyle? Probably. I mean, the fact that she's still, you know, swearing about him in confessional, the fact that every single week they're going to put him up when, again, as I stated earlier, the numbers are not on the side of the actual, you know, quote unquote veteran challenge people no numbers on the side of the brits so for you to be splitting votes and arguing amongst yourselves when the numbers are on the other side of the house which means even if you think you're cool with their alliance you're at the bottom of the brit alliance right yeah yeah even if you think you're cool with them so this is all really dumb and you mentioned you know Kara having feelings for for uh kyle still it reminds me of an early episode. I'm pretty sure I saw this on Grey's Anatomy one time. It seems oh. like a Grey's Anatomy type thing. Oh. But they said, the opposite of love isn't hate, it's indifference. Yeah. Right? And so that you can't see a, pet, a better uh, example of this than what's going on with this love triangle here. Because obviously, you know, the fact that you're still showing hate, you're still showing this emotion, you're still wasting your energy on this person that you claim to not care about anymore doesn't make sense at all yeah or at least doesn't make sense to me and kyle kyle does feel bad for his partner whereas Polly, i think is just delusional yeah like the tribunal which i find is very fun like (laughs) the tribunal i thought was very funny in the sense that it's growing i tweeted this last night these guys are never gonna fight no right you're not going to fight. We all know you're not going to fight. But I want to give a special shout out to whoever edits the episodes of the challenge because they do a really, really good job at making it look as if these guys are going to fight. <laughs> but they're never actually going to fight. They'll charge into each other's faces and we'll get some like pretty cool editing techniques where it like zooms into the screen and the music hits at certain points and makes it look like, you know, they might fight. They're never going to fight. And shouts to security of having to do the suicide laps. Yeah. Right? Like just running back and forth <laughs> into the, onto the screen to, to quote unquote break these guys up. But that's all that's going on. It's just tough talk. It's just these guys, you know, I don't know. I have to add something. To, to show Kara who they love or who loves her the most. Uh, it's just really weird. I, I have to add something too. How much... How much did you follow the Kara Kyle or sorry, excuse me, the Kara Polly Danielle drama uh in the off season? Zero. I don't care about it at all. I'm sorry, I gotta I do have to like give you some background on what was going on in the real world, because like it makes a difference to understanding this dynamic. And I'm sorry for breaking down this wall for you. At the same time that all this is going on. Polly never stops talking to his ex, Danielle. This all came out because Danielle posted on social media, on Instagram, a really um, heartfelt and frankly heartbreaking post about how like Polly's mind games had like really hurt her and damaged her. And like, I don't want to say it was suicidal, but like borderline, like it was, it was dark. And in the upshot, a bunch of people had screen capped it and sent it to Kara, and Kara actually reached out to Danielle. And it turns out that he had been lying to both of them and seen both of them at the same time. Even like when this season, when War of the Worlds was being shot, he was in touch with Danielle and telling her, like, no, 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 I'm just like hanging out with Kara for the sake of the show but it's you I love and like he had <laughs> your man's he he played some he played some classic fuckboy tricks 
he convinced Danielle to block Kara. So that and uh. and then he never posted anything featuring Kara on his social media. So that that just like it created a world for Danielle where she didn't see how often Kara and Polly were together, didn't see how like obviously a couple they were. Like it's all just a big manipulation. And then when Kara and Danielle compared notes, they Polly and Kara broke up and it's this big blow up and like there's all the and that's when Polly went on Instagram live to tell people about his and Kara's sex lives and how like he would fuck her and Danielle's lingerie and all that grossness shit we didn't need to hear they're now back together like in the past week or two Polly and Kara have gone back together but at this time when War of the Worlds was being filmed Kara and Polly were together but he had Danielle as his side action so I think a lot of what his showing out and like macho posturing was almost the overcompensation. I don't want to say he had a guilty conscience because I don't. I think he's a sociopath. But it was him showing, like showing Kara, like how deeply loyal he is. You know what I mean? Like it's all, all of this drama in my mind is about Kara and Polly's dynamic and trying to like turn each other on and like prove how much they love each other you know what i mean like it's all it is you're totally right that's all performative it's all a performance for the show but it's also a performance for each other right and like everyone else is just getting yeah. sucked in yeah i think they're both in on it though right like yeah Kara yeah survived as being one of the more popular people on the challenge for you know, among other things, like she obviously does really well in the challenge, but among other things, she's always uh, romantically involved with someone on each and every season, right? Yeah. So now being at the center of this love triangle kind of plays into that, and definitely Polly does a good job of hyping that up, but we also know that his whole MO was to get with Kara. His whole MO is to be this, like, reality star personality, which also you know, plays into these fake fights where he's like running around pretending as if he's jumping past security and stuff. So people can break it up and it's just dumb. Like the only thing that, that I found interesting about their whole fake fights was, uh, two things. One Leroy calling out the fact that doing a costume party while (laughs) trying to have a fight probably isn't a good idea because Kyle's wearing a skirt. And chances are he probably doesn't have underwear under that. And so you don't want anything to fall out while you're having a fight, which is pretty good advice. Um, That and then the other thing was the tribunal. I thought I got to admit that I was wrong about the tribunal because I thought the tribunal is very fun and it's very entertaining. And obviously this is all dependent upon who ends up getting nominated. But if they keep this streak up, It's just been really good. Even before the fake fight between Kyle and Polly, and again, they're not really going to fight, but Polly trying to say that it's not personal and it's not about Kara, which is just a blatant lie that made no sense. Yeah. But Kyle bringing up the fact, what do you want me to do? I can't unfuck her. Oh. Which I thought, whoa. (laughs) That was, that's an interesting line. That was a, that got a whoa for me. Okay. Uh, I thought that was funny. And Pauly saying the only thing intimidating about your team is Maddie, which to me, that was Kyle's opportunity to kind of just laugh at him and be like, no, you're right. Maddie is a really good partner. Yeah. (laughs) Right. And instead they go into their macho fake fight thing that is really just dumb. But Pauly, Pauly saying, acting like I ain't going to come to your front door. I've been at your front door. (laughs) It's like, these guys are really funny. Like, I just laugh at it because it's such straight studio gangster and it's so funny. It's so blatantly fake. They always have a chance that if you were going to fight, you would fight because it always takes security a couple seconds to get in. Yeah. Like the Rajon Rondo, Paul, uh, Chris Paul fight. Right. The refs are right there. They were still both able to get a couple punches in before the refs or players broke it up. 
Well, and also... Same goes here for Kyle and Polly. They have time where they could fight if they were going to fight. Polly is supposed to be the master of karate. Surely his hands are like lightning. And if he wanted to throw a punch, you're right, he'd have more than enough time. And because it was tribunal, like, I don't think they had, like, security definitely was not in the room. Like, they definitely, they definitely had, like, the first person in there was a producer and good honor. Yeah. But, like, they, you're right, they definitely had, like, a 30 second minute or 30 second minute that makes no sense a 30 second moment where they could have thrown a couple of hands but they didn't because they're not going yeah. to because they're paper gangsters they're even before that fight fun. though there was something that was said that i thought was super smart when ct and julia go in they're the first ones in they someone asked him like you know what about like you're a lot or nani said to ct we're not in an alliance and like that's why i put you up and ct said i don't have any alliances with anyone because that just means i'm going to get lied to later and i have to say i think that's really smart politics like it's just a guy that's been in a lot of challenges yeah and like it's I mean, you and I always, always, always say this. Like, just keep your head down and don't piss anyone off. And, like, that's your alliance, at least for, like, the first five or six rounds. Um, He also gets to coast on reputation. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. But, like, it it makes a lot of sense. And I think that was a great, like, wake-up call to Nani, where she's playing that, like, alliance game. Like, she's definitely, like learned under the Johnny Bananas uh, learning tree and like Johnny is all about alliances CT doesn't really need alliances neither does Wes I mean, Wes relies on politics but not so much alliances like it's not like I have your back you have my back we're in this together forever but more like shifting moment by moment who do you fuck with who do you not fuck with uh, I thought yeah. that was really interesting and then we also had Amanda and Hunter just screaming at each other. And then Josh, who doesn't like Amanda, also getting into it with Hunter because he thinks Hunter is so off-key. What did you think of the Hunter-Amanda fight? This was my like favorite moment of the entire episode. This was my... like lines of the episode this was my back and forth of the episode like i rewound it like three times and just laughed each and every time i watched it because it was just so good because again i like amanda amanda's spicy right i know people don't like amanda i love amanda Amanda. not everyone's taste amanda's funny to me i like that she's just hype right (laughs) like i like how spicy she is she's just cheese she comes right in and she's upset at hunter who, for Hunter's part, right? Hunter did say uh, the exact quote that Hunter said when he picked he picked them. He said something to the effect of, um, I'm man enough to admit that I'm only putting her in because she put me in, and I'm petty enough to follow through with it, <laughs> right? So I give Hunter credit for being honest with his reasoning, but Amanda comes in and she says, how are you going to put me in when I gave you a chance at a million dollars last year, right? And her and Hunter start yelling back and forth, and she's saying, I got you to the final, roll the tapes, bro. <laughs> Which, yep. again, shouts to Amanda. Queen of the sarcastic Amanda, bros. <laughs> yes, I'm always here for the sarcastic bros. And Amanda's also trying to tell him that they can be an ally, to which Hunter said, Because Amanda's telling him, why are you sending me in when you need us to be allies? Like, if you send me out, you're going home next. Yeah. Right? She's Which again right. goes back to what I was saying earlier about you think you're cool with the Brit alliance, but you might be at the bottom of said alliance, right? Yeah. You don't even know how that's going to go. So I think Amanda's right in this situation, but also then Hunter starts popping off and he says, you think I'm going home next? I'm better than both of you. Which doesn't even really make sense. Like, what does that have to do with anything? Like, if they go home, what does it matter that you're better than them if they're at home? That makes no sense. Yeah. Enough. But okay, Hunter, I'll roll with you here. <laughs> Hunter continues to yell that. Then Josh jumps in, which he copies Amanda, but he just yells l- louder than Amanda did. 
because when Hunter starts yelling, Amanda says, you're so fake, you're phony. And then Josh starts just yelling louder, calling him fake, to which Hunter says, what? Watch my first season, dog. Watch my first season, dog. Welcome to the challenge. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> just <laughs> keep screaming, you're welcome. <laughs> which I don't, again, I don't even understand what that means. <laughs> Josh called him fake, and then somehow that made Hunter talk about, you're only in your first season. Watch my first season, dog. Welcome to the challenge. You're welcome. What? <laughs> Does that make any sense at all? I don't know. No. But the repetitive hunter yelling, you're welcome, was so funny to me. But Amanda got the last word where she says, I'm glad Ashley took the million dollars because at least I can say I'm friends with the millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so silly. It's so petty. But this is why I'm here. Here, Here's the thing about all of this. Because I, 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 I love this scene, too. I'm definitely team Amanda. Because, I mean, you said it. She's right. They could be allies. They should be allies. But here's the thing. Because Hunter and Amanda, in the past, they've gotten along. I think what's going on here is Hunter was super, super pissed about getting cut out of the million dollars by Ashley. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. He eliminated her first chance he got. First elimination of the show. Right? But I don't think that's been enough to get rid of his anger. You know what I mean? Like, he's still super pissed. Yeah, that's what he said, right? I, he, he admitted it. No, but, like, not he's not super pissed about being nominated by Amanda and Josh. He's super pissed, or I guess about Josh putting him in. He's still super pissed about Ashley, and but she's not there to, like, take it out on anymore. So who can, who's he taking it out on? Amanda. And this is, like, Hunter, when he first met Georgia, said, like, hey, my weakness in this game is politics. This is a classic example, right? Like, he's yep. such an emotional person, for better or for worse. This isn't even so much a criticism of Hunter as a person. It's just, like, it's who he is. He's an emotional guy. And he's still hurting so much about how Ashley fucked him over last season. And he doesn't know what to do with that anger. The next closest target is Amanda. And Amanda doesn't help herself by being the pop-off queen. So he's just he's just digging this hole. Like He needs someone like a Wes, or he's gone now, but a CT, to like weigh in and be like, Hey man, like keep your eye on the prize. Like What are you doing? You're in a good position. Build alliances. Bury the hatchet. Like meditate like move move past this because it's only gonna yeah. fuck you it's so funny it was honestly so funny the you're welcome that made me because he's just yelling louder like that was one of those things where he won the argument because he was just yelling the loudest <laughs> and i know they always say that that's not a thing that happens but it happened on the challenge <laughs> yeah this is the one time this is the one it's time so where it happened but let's jump ahead to we find out we know already right double elimination we end up on the killing floor the team set up the votes and it basically comes down to your man's turbo right it's pretty straightforward who the votes were going for we already knew that kyle or kyle was going to get put in by Polly, and we already knew that um who's the other team again uh kyle was going to vote for Polly. we already knew we already knew that and to me, the funny part about that is just, okay, so you put him in the votes, the way that the votes are angled, your man's turbo considered trying to figure out what happens if it gets, if it gets tied up and TJ right away says, I don't think you want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to get to a point where someone does test it and tries to tie it up? Do you think that's going to happen? I think it's gonna. Ha I think it's gonna be. It's gonna happen. Like, eventually, we're gonna get to nut cutting time, where there's just down to two alliances. Probably, I guess it's gonna be like the UK versus Big Brother, just by maybe by numbers. Yeah, and something. And so there's gonna be, and there's gonna be like some team like 
Amanda and Josh. And, like, we know that Amanda, when she digs her heels in, won't fuck over her Alliance members. Although she virtually has no one left. She has no one left. True. Uh, there, there'll be a situation, like a Zach and Amanda situation from last season. And, yeah, we're, I, I can't wait to see what happens. Like, I can't wait till we get to that fireworks factory. So, exactly, right? It's going to be so good. But this week, we did not get there yet. So, as mentioned, we know that Pauly goes for Kyle's team. We know that Hunter goes for Amanda's team. And then it comes down to your man's... Like, Nani basically uses hers as a burn vote, right? Yeah. And it comes down to Turbo, who gives this, like, weird-ass speech about his home country and peace and war. And the, and and the word for peace... Yeah, it was. I don't even know what he was talking about. I rewound it a couple times trying to make sense of it, and I couldn't. Well, they and cut it. Then right? I just started laughing at. I started laughing at how great it was edited. Yeah, because it made it look so much better in terms of all the cutaways of the people just staring at him, like, "What are you talking about?" And then he says, "TJ, do you know what I mean?" <laughs> and TJ's like, "No, <laughs> just pick. <laughs> just make your pick, bro." That <laughs> might. I know I'm paraphrasing, and that's not what TJ said, but essentially that's what he said, right? That is one of the alt low key one of the all time TJ moments. Like <laughs> TJ, so you understand? Good. No, just <laughs> you just gotta pick someone. Like, just pick somebody. <laughs> so he picks Kyle, who doesn't. Who Kyle goes in, and Kyle's team now gets to pick who they go against. Yeah. And in a weird twist, he doesn't pick Kara, which he says is because, you know, he still somehow cares for her and he doesn't want to pick her. But instead, he picks JP and Natalie. And I think his whole, oh, I didn't want to pick Kara because I still like her, was a cover up for the fact that he just thought they could beat JP and Natalie. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's worthwhile. It's worth pointing out. They know that um they know that it's going to be some sort of physical headbanger wrestling competition so like they know that size is going to matter in this instance um Mm -hmm. i do think i think you're right that he picked natalie and jp because he figured that maddie could take out natalie um I do think, though, that it was smart, and it's something that Polly had not thought of, because Polly is so focused on Kyle that he's not realizing that whoever goes in has the opportunity to call out members of your alliance, which is exactly what Kyle did. Exactly. It's exactly what Kyle right? did. And so, totally true, right? You're you're totally right about that. What did you think of Natalie's point where she's she's like, uh, she's mad. You don't pick one of the smallest girls in the house. That's a bully. <laughs> that's like, not a, that's that's about? not bullying. Does it by that yeah, logic? Like, what are you talking about? By that logic, no one should ever put Natalie in, right? Because she's the smallest. Which is really her problem. Uh, actually, no one should put in her or Amanda because they're the smallest. <laughs> yeah, that that's just um, bullshit. Like, sorry, that's just not how it works. Yeah, that was a terrible point by Natalie. That was just her being salty and afraid to go in against Maddie, which I get and I understand, but that's not the way to go about it. No. Uh, the next thing, though, that made me laugh was Polly, another pump fake by Polly, where oh yeah, he says, TJ, can we leave the girls out of it and just have me and Kyle go at it? And it's like, we know they're not going to say yes to that. <laughs> like, why would they say yes to that? <laughs> and obviously, TJ's just like, no. <laughs> Which another solid performance by a man's TJ Lavin again. But Polly, like, get out of here, right? Fucking so, Polly reminds me of there's an episode of Saved by the Bell where Screech was really mad at Zach because Zach had asked out Lisa Turtle. And yes. Screech goes like is getting worked up and goes, Hold me back, hold me back, Slater, and he grabs AC Slater's arm and puts AC yeah. Slater's arm in front of him, and AC Slater's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" That's Polly, right? Like always, like he like always assessing the situation, making sure that security's on the way, and then going, 
and like jaw jacking, right? Like never putting oh. himself into an actual position to throw hands because he knows. I don't. I don't even think that Kyle's that tough, right? Yeah. But like, no, 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 it's totally messy. Polly doesn't want to find out. Polly doesn't want to find out because like maybe Polly's telling himself Kyle has a puncher's chance. I don't know. But it's not like previous uh, seasons where like Brad and Darrell are fighting, and Darrell's like has a, is a boxer, or like CT is breaking dudes' jaws. Like, yeah, come on, man! Like, if you're gonna fight, I will fight. Say, I will say, Rob wrote in and said, uh, Rob wrote in. He tweeted at me last night, and he said. Because uh, I was going back and forth, and I said, oh, someone wrote to me, because I was writing about how these guys are never going to fight. And someone wrote in to me saying, uh, Brian wrote in and said, it's funny, Pauly always says people ain't about that life, but he isn't either. Clown show. To which Rob on Twitter wrote to both of us saying, to be fair, if he swings, he gets sent home. And I stated, true, but why pretend as if you're going to fight? There's no need. Rob's point, which is a good one, to create TV and stay on it. <laughs> yep. And hey, to me, this sums up 2019 culture, right? Because I said, cool. I said, cool, but it still makes him look lame. To which Rob's response was, perhaps, but I'll I'll be happy to look lame for money and with what they get for appearance fees these days, I think it's a worthy trade-off. And to me, that is celebrity and life in 2019 summed up right there. Well, you know what? I I had not seen this exchange that you guys had um, because I I was working. But here's my thought process. Is it not worth it to get kicked off one season and then just, like, be able to coast on that? Like, CT was kicked off for years (laughs) <laughs> and came back right like with with all the other attention that they get now because of social media and because Polly's been on not just uh big brother but like he could do x on the beach he did just the tattoo of us like and they're getting appearance fees like th- throw a punch sure you get kicked <laughs> off this season but you'll just be back next season right like the, all the no, people and, I've mentioned who've been in fights, too, like Adam King, um, already I, I already meant. I mean, Leroy's been in fights. CT, Durrell, Brad, like all these guys came back. So, what's the cost? Well, here's the thing, and shouts to Rob and shouts to uh, Brian for writing in. We we'll appreciate the tweets all the time. Try to read them when we can on the show appreciate it and i think it's just so funny to highlight to me the way that i read it right it was just this is where we're at in society right where people have a line and everybody's line is going to be somewhere different in terms of what they would do for money and so if it's being a studio gangster and hey does paulie care that i'm calling him a studio gangster no i'm sure he's happy with his appearance fees and his money and all that it just would i do that no and that's fine. It's just a different, you know, mindset, different thought process in terms of where I draw the line, my character, the fact that I have to go I have to go home and deal with my friends, deal with my family if I'm on some reality show and be like, "Hey, this is my face. This is what I'm out here doing publicly." I have to live up to that in my regular life regardless of how much money I have, right? Money's not going to stop me from thinking what you know how terrible i really am or something like that you am i making sense does that make sense you know what i mean yeah it's just one of those things that i find super funny but again 2019 celebrity culture a lot of people out here to be instagram famous so yeah they want to be famous for being famous they don't want to be famous for actually doing something and i know famous for fake fights which i say is a generational thing because the younger generation isn't used to being punched in the face. No. So there's no repercussions. I say it all the time. If you follow this podcast, you know. The younger generation not used to getting punched in the face. So you don't fear repercussions. So you think, hey, I can just say whatever I want to this person because we're not really going to fight because we're on a reality show. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> and at some point, that's going to change because someone's going to take you up on that offer. 
and it's going to be Turbo, and he's going to win the fight. <laughs> So anyways, let's get to the actual, like, what goes down here because... So they pick JP and Natalie, and now, because it's a double elimination, JP and Natalie get to pick who they want to go against. And JP decides that he's going to pick, of all people, CT. <laughs> I have to say... <laughs> Which is a, I'm gonna, a surprise to a lot of people, but what did you think? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scoop a Sheldon line here. Shoutouts to the producers. Because okay. all the reaction confessions, they just had like seven in a row where people were like, who calls out CT? Why would you call out CT? What are you thinking? Call it like back to back to back to back. And it was just so well done. As you said, yeah. everyone is shocked. I had already sort of seen an inkling of what was going to go down on Twitter. But like, okay. even still, what are you thinking? Taking out CT we've touched on this before ct is not in the best shape of his life right now but that's a lot of man to move you know what i mean like in a physical competition jp's a yeah. big dude but ct's a bigger dude and heavy and like yeah he's carrying around a dad bod but he's also got muscle underneath there, right? Like he's the he's got that sumo fat happening where like sure he's got a gut, but underneath you know there's muscle. Like his core Here's strength I'm thing, sure is still fantastic, but he's like two hundred what do you think he weighs right now? Two seventy? I have no idea. Two eighty? I don't know. No, not that much, but I mean a lot for sure. A lot. Definitely a lot. My thing, though, with this decision is you could clearly tell this is something JP was thinking about for a while. Yeah. Like, this is how, again, celebrity culture, how am I going to make a splash? I'm going to go at one of the big dogs. So you could tell he probably had this in his mind for a while. But was this the time to pull that trigger? Because this is a you're going against two people. So if you say, hey, I want to go one on one against CT in an elimination. Cool. More power to you. But now you're going against CT and another person. Yeah. And I don't want to knock Kyle because, hey, more power to Kyle. He did a great job. But do you kind of think that some of his win was based on the fact that CT and JP were so focused on going at each other that it kind of made it not easier for Kyle, but I guess on some level, maybe a little bit easier for Kyle. But it's just a dumb play by JP to me because you're going against CT and someone else. Going against CT is difficult enough, but now you got to go against CT and someone else? That makes no sense. The obvious play was to go against someone, who, whoever you think the weakest person is, whether it's Bear, whether it's, uh, what's my track guy's name again? Theo. Theo, right? Like whoever you think the weakest person is up there. That's the obvious move. You're not going to go against CT and have to go against someone else at the same time, right? If yeah. this was just one-on-one, -on -one, cool. I understand where you're going. Try to make a name for yourself. This this was not that move. No, it wasn't. And I think you're totally right. A and Wes even said it in the uh, confessionals. Kyle realized that CT is – you're only fighting half of CT – and as mm -hmm. Kyle was smart, because Kyle's not a stupid man, he focused on getting the ring between him and JP out of JP's hand. So then JP and CT have to focus on each other. Well, I should say JP has to focus on CT. And with CT distracted, with JP going nuts on his right hand, Kyle just has to focus on getting, like, a distracted CT's hand to open, and then he's off to the races. Yeah, great strategy totally. by Kyle. Yeah, it was a really good job by Kyle. And, I mean, credit to CT for holding on as long as he did because you're going against two guys, and he, he held his own for a long time. And, again, if it wasn't for the maneuvering and the twisting that Kyle was doing, does he beat CT? Probably not. But... Credit to Kyle for getting the job done. Kyle was able to pull it off. I don't think either of us are that surprised that Maddie won. No. Right? Like, Maddie beating Julia and Natalie. 
you know, I think that was pretty good and a great job by Maddie. And it's funny because what another great twist it would have been because you could have ended up with new partners. Yeah. In this, right? Like that would have been a great twist. But it works out where Maddie and Kyle are both still in this game. And it couldn't have gotten any worse for the alliance of Kara and Polly, right? Because CT is one of Kara's best friends. Yep. See ya. And Natalie is obviously one of Polly's best friends. See ya. So in a challenge where you had the upper hand, you had the ninja Natalie kicking ass, taking names. You're in the tribunal. Tribunal. You get to send in Kyle. And it's a double elimination. Instead of Kyle going home, both of your alliances go home. And Two members of your alliance go home. And, That's terrible. And, and, and Kyle and Maddie now have a relic. Exactly. They get a free pass next week. They can't be sent home for one week. This was it's, it's, a flaming fucking disaster for Polly and Kara in terms of gameplay. Like a total yeah, disaster. Like we always talk about who killed it. Polly and Kara did not kill it in this episode. No, <laughs> they they did they firmly did not kill it. This was a disaster for them. And also, there's also the psychological benefit of now uh, Kyle and Maddie are a little gassed up. Um, mm -hmm. Maddie fucking showed out and destroyed the women in that competition. So now they're going to have a harder time convincing people to do their dirty work and call out Kyle and Maddie. Right? That's true. Because a lot true. a lot of the other competitors are like, you know what? I don't need to go toe to toe with Maddie. Like maybe maybe people can convince themselves like, oh no, Kyle like got lucky or like Kyle used good strategy. But Maddie dominated in that elimination. And yes. any any female she competitor and made me type Go ahead. No, I was saying it made me type out the words Maddie versus Laurel question mark yeah. obviously still way super early and i'm not saying that but it made me think of it it made the thought enter my mind which is not something i thought would happen yeah and it it's just all the other alliances just grew stronger right yeah like we've we've spoken about sort of a big brother alliance that's dead that's dead julia's gone Natalie's gone. It's just Josh and it's just Josh and Davon left. Now. Yeah. And like Davon and Josh are were probably not the weakest members, but the least reliable members of that Big Brother alliance. Because first of all, yeah. Davon wants nothing to oh, do with Polly. I forgot about Polly. My bad. Yeah. Uh Davon wants nothing to do with all this drama and she's staying well clear of it. Also, uh, Josh has Amanda. Amanda fucking hates Kara and will not do anything to work with her. Yep. So, like, that's a dead end. Like, they just fuck themselves so hard. And why? Because they have this fucked up dynamic where they're picking on Kyle so that they can have hot sex later. You know what I mean? Like, that. that's what it boils down to. It's... Yeah. And Kyle called them out on it repeatedly, not just in this episode, but in previous episodes, where he's like, what's this really about? Like, what's happening here? So Yeah, but I think they all know. We all know what this is really about. But I, I have another interesting just takeaway from this episode, and it was kind of the way that it ended. The episode ended, you had Turbo talking about more craziness from Turbo, about the challenge teaching him that you can't protect anyone yeah whatever that means sure turbo cool but bear talking about how you know you look at what's gone on so far this season and you had the champ in ashley sent home you had the challenge legend in bananas sent home and now ct sent home and to me as always, I'm always thinking about this as a producer. I'm always thinking about this in terms of putting the show together and as like a show franchise. And if you're MTV, one of the things that we kept talking about was needing to inject some new blood because, you know, the Johnny Bananas, the Wesses, the CTs were getting up there. And even when you bring them back in, you're not getting the same punch as you were 
back in the day, right? Mm -hmm. It's not going to last forever, which makes sense. So if you're a producer of this show and you're watching how things are going down now, it's going it's happening so perfect for you. It's almost as if you're writing the script because now you're forcing all these other characters, these other people into the forefront of the show. And, you know, maybe Kyle and Polly can be a future rivalry that continues for a long time. Maybe, you know, Bear and Georgia can be a couple going forward that you can do for season after season after season. Also, this War of the Worlds thing, in this era of 2019, and I'm tiptoeing around this because I'm saying this as someone that works for a TV station, but in this era of 2019, it's becoming more and more apparent that wherever your shit is based, it's not just for your country at all, right? It's international. You're on the internet. And so having a show that appeals to different countries around the world and having more people be successful, not just from the normal challenge, it benefits the overall franchise. And it's just all in all a good look for everything that's going on so far for the challenge this season. I just hope it keeps up because it's been really entertaining. Because if you think about this, John, I'll ask you this. If you think about prior seasons before, and if you had said, hey, Johnny Bananas out early, CT out early, all the people that we know out early, we'd kind of maybe get bored. No, or we kind of worry about, oh, is this going to be fun? Like, is this going to be interesting? Yeah. I don't have that worry with this cast. Do you? No, no, I don't. No, not at all. This cast is entertaining. There's all sorts of little dynamics. Like, obviously, so far, the focus has been on fucking Polly and Kara and Kyle. But there's other, like, little seeds being sown. Like, we had just that we didn't touch on this, but there's a small scene where Cam and Theo were getting really flirty, and Mm -hmm. uh, Leroy was like, hey, like, that's kind of disrespectful. Like, you know, I thought we were friends, we dated, kind of broke up. They clearly, I think, have feelings for each other, but you're flirting with this dude in front of me. Like, what the fuck? Like, that's gonna, that's gonna develop. You're right, Georgia and Bear, they obviously are very combustible. I thought it was hilarious that when they had a costume party, like every other costume party since 2017, there was more than one woman dressed up like Harley Quinn. Uh, But they were going, (laughs) they were going for the, uh, they're both dressed as like the Joker and Harley Quinn and admire that. Any, Mm -hmm. any, any couple that dresses up like Joker and Harley Quinn, you want nothing to do with that couple. Like, just like shorthand, that couple, that's a bad scene couple. Because that is the actual couple of Joker and Harley Quinn, both in the movie Suicide Squad and in general, are really fucked up. And so any couple that's like, oh yeah, they're just like us. That's bad. That's a bad scene. That's like, in the mid-90s, any couple that were like, oh yeah, we're like... uh, the natural born killers like Woody Harrelson and what's her face that Oliver Stone yeah. movie it's not a good scene like you don't want any part of that couple <laughs> you want to you want to wait through their first three breakups and then the restraining order and then maybe you can hang out with one of them but like yeah bad scene but to your point to get back on topic after I went on that small rant um, yeah, I, there's still like a lot of it. This is not going to be a boring season, even though we've lost some of the biggest names in the game. Losing Natalie is a pretty big deal too, right? The f- Natalie was barely even on this season. Yeah. Uh, losing, I mean, we're glossing over it and focusing on Johnny and CT, but losing Ashley in the first episode, like Ashley's great TV and a solid competitor Dude. and like so combustible so yeah it's uh but i still think this season is going strong i forget who and i apologize but someone tweeted at us that they think that this is like a mount rushmore season already maybe strong talk too early too early but it's too early it's getting there like it's it's climbing the standings fast it's already better than the island (laughs) (laughs) yeah I mean, the one question I do have, too, is do we think that there's a Redemption House? No. Okay, just checking. Uh, Just checking. I'm probably going to keep asking that. That's fair. Just in case. 
at bare minimum, I guess there might be uh, what are what do they call the ringers they bring back in? Yeah, uh, mercenaries. Mercenaries, yes. Maybe something like that, but um, I don't know. There's going to be twists, which I enjoy, and so far I just hope they continue on this pace of having just solid, solid episodes in a row. What was your line of the episode? Oh, I, I've said already, from the get-go, it wasn't even close. It was the Amanda, Josh versus uh, Hunter, and just Hunter screaming, Welcome to the challenge. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> that, to me, that whole thing was just so good. It's just so good. That whole entire back and forth. Again, I'm here for Amanda. Is that back-to-back weeks? Amanda and Josh are involved in my favorite yeah. scene in an episode. <laughs> so good. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I'm here for I'm here for all the shade. I'm here for Amanda just popping off because she doesn't back down from anyone. She's not afraid to tell you about herself. Oh, sorry, about yourself. <laughs> She's not afraid to tell you about yourself. And yeah, just the dynamic of her and Josh. It's just good TV. It's just good TV. Uh, I think my line of the episode, because it sums everything up so well, was when Kyle said, I can't unfuck her. (laughs) Because, honestly, I think at this stage, Kyle wishes he could unfuck Kara. Uh, I don't know. Seems to be his swag. I don't know. But but even still, like, I mean, that that sums up the whole beef, right? It Mm -hmm. sums up the whole beef. Uh, Who killed it for you? Um, I will say too because I forgot to mention Hunter earlier on when he was saying that their team is the Bullocks. Yeah, I'm pronouncing that properly. And they added the key that said, which means testicles. Yep. <laughs> that was also funny. That gets a, an honorable mention. Uh, but who killed it in this episode? It's Kyle. I'm saying Kyle killed it in this episode, and it's just because to pull off that win, like they're gunning for you, they're sending you in. All the odds are against you. And to come up with a win in an elimination, a physical elimination against CT and JP, however that shook down, more power to you, Kyle. You did it. You completely flipped it back around when everything would have been against you. You're either getting sent home or you're coming back in a house where you have no numbers. And instead, you eliminated the numbers of the people who are trying to get at you. And you want elimination. You still have your same partner who is proving week in, week out that she is not one to F with. So, yeah, I'm I'm saying Kyle killed it in this episode. You know what? Sorry, that's unfair of me. That's, in fact, sexist of me. Kyle and Maddie, if not Maddie and Kyle, <laughs> killed it in this episode. I think it, I could be wrong, but... But is this our third straight week of being unanimous and who killed it? Because I agree completely. I think Maddie and Kyle came out smelling like roses in all of this. Right? Like, if you're in the house and you're a bystander, if you're a Hunter and Georgia, um, a Wes and D. Like, if you are people who were not around for all of this shit and you don't really have a dog in the fight, you're thinking, man, Kara and Polly are fucking nuts. And, like, I want nothing to do with them. But, like, Kyle and Maddie, A, I'm intimidated by Maddie in competition. B, they seem like the much more reasonable people. So they're the ones I'm going to work with. Right, and they have a relic. Like I think, just across the board, even Kyle facing his fear of heights and being the one to jump across, and he almost did it. Wind or not, he almost like it was a good showing physically. They just seem more reasonable. They seem more competitive. Who knows what next week holds in terms of competition and elimination? But there's a very good chance that. Kara and Polly's alliance is going to crumble a little bit more. If not, like, I'm not saying that those teams in particular are going to get eliminated, but, like, I think another one of their alliance members or someone that they're, like, sort of close with. I mean, put it this way, 
Zach, who is friends with Kara, or was friends with Kara, he's now flipped to being all the way pro Kyle. Right? Mm -hmm. I also think something that we haven't really touched on this season at all, but like is sort of happening broadly. Kara's not really doing well in competitions anymore. Not just this season, yeah. but last season. Like, you know, people were always saying, like, oh, like, Marie is going to hold her back. Marie didn't really hold her back last season. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, Kara is really... She's, she's lost a gear. I don't know what's going on, but she's not the powerhouse that she was in competitions. You know we're getting further and further removed from when she was the overall winner because that was two seasons ago three seasons ago in terms of filming it was a year i think i think she's maybe losing a step maybe she's distracted by polly maybe she's not as in great shape who knows what's going on but like she's not getting results that's for fucking sure so interesting just saying. I know I know all those Car Maria stands are gonna lose their fucking minds if they made it this far into this podcast. But I don't think so. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Um where can the people find you on social media? Uh you can find me on Twitter at Shell Alexander and on Instagram at Sheldon Alexander, and as always, like and subscribe to all these places where you find the podcast, whether it's SoundCloud, iTunes, rate us, as my dude Bomani Jones says all the time. Please give us five stars, because if you give us four, I'm forced to think that you're a hater. Huh. Um, and of course, subscribe on Instagram, or on uh, YouTube as well. Uh, you can get me on Twitter and Instagram, at Hill. Um, I, I, they, I don't think I have to worry. I think we got through all the Leafs and Raptors coverage I had to do. So I think, I think I'll be a little more challenged focused for the next week or so on my Twitter. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to try to live tweet as I, I say it all the time. I'm going to try to live tweet the show when I can, cause it's a lot of fun. Uh, last night was actually kind of weird and I was able to, and I didn't really expect that I would be. Uh, but when I can, I definitely will because it's a lot of fun. But apologies because I don't want to make promises anymore that I can't keep. The schedule, <laughs> you know, the schedule gets tough. Uh, well, until next week, this was You Killed It. You Killed It.